was exciting. I would block out time, go to a coffee shop, get my laptop out. And it, it felt like I was planning an, a trip, an adventure, but it was like my own life was the adventure. I had a similar story where I generated about 250,000 pounds in revenue within that first year uh, of starting my business. And throughout pretty much that whole first year, I was still staying in my nine to five job. I personally balanced uh, a very demanding job whilst starting my first dropshipping business. And that's a very exciting time when you know that you've built something for yourself that then matches and beats your income. And then you've got the choice of whether you want to stay in that job or leave it. I've made more in profit from those two orders of like, say, £2,000 in, in orders than I would have done if I'd have got in the car, commuted for an hour, gone to work all day, commuted for an hour back and got home, been exhausted, given up all my time and I've still made more in 10 minutes. How would you recommend they get started without feeling overwhelmed? You have to start really by... Welcome to the Dropship Unlocked podcast. I'm Lewis Smith, the founder of Dropship Unlocked, and with me is our client success coach, James Erdley. Now, when we're not recording the podcast episodes, we're running our own e-commerce businesses and helping aspiring entrepreneurs launch their own high-ticket dropshipping businesses. Keen to build your own six or even seven figure business? My book, The Home Turf Advantage, is your blueprint for launching a profitable online store. Grab your copy at htabook.com today and let's get you started. Now sit back, relax, and let's unlock your potential with the Dropship Unlocked podcast. Today, we're tackling a big question that's on the mind of many aspiring entrepreneurs, and it's whether you can start dropshipping alongside a busy full-time job. Lewis, this is something that many people I know are curious about, given their busy schedules today. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, balancing a, a job between launching a business is definitely something we hear a lot of members asking about. It can seem quite daunting, and but I think with the right strategies deployed in the right way, it's definitely not only possible, but it could also be quite manageable as well if done right. Absolutely. Big opportunity there and possible, I believe, but we're going to dive into the specifics and how you should approach it if you want to start a business alongside a full-time job. So, Lewis, can you break down for us then whether you think it's possible to start alongside a dropshipping business and also whether you think it's well suited for those in a full-time job. Yeah, absolutely. I think firstly, the thing to mention is that dropshipping doesn't require the same kind of time investment as a traditional retail business. It would be very hard to say I'm working a full-time job and I'm going to open a traditional retail business on the side because you'd physically have to be present in both of those places. But I know when I first started, I'd wake up early mornings and um, before my day at work would begin I'd go to the gym I'd sit in this hotel lobby after the gym and I'd just work on the tasks in my business uh, handling um, customer inquiries updating my product listings and it kind of felt like this secret project that I was working on myself and I was nurturing this business and going to bring it to life and that was one day going to be my future and I used to think back then about why I was doing it and it was so that I could support my family so we could travel the world at the drop of a hat and like take my children who didn't exist at the time to the other side of the world and go on these amazing trips and just have complete freedom to do whatever we want in the week and walk around London without a, a care in the world and it took a few years but then those things start to come true and suddenly you have children suddenly you are in a family and the business is the thing that supports you and so it's, it's funny like watching it go full circle I was Back at that time, still working a job, I'd get home from work, have a dinner at home, and then I'd work late into the evenings, dedicating my time to finding products, refining the ad campaigns that I was working on. And it was a lot of hustle. It was really grinding it out and knowing that every one of those small steps that I took was intentional. It was bringing me closer to financial freedom. And I just remained motivated because of that. So I know that if you are working a nine to five job in the week and you don't have much free time, the weekends are probably going to become your most productive time. So what I certainly did when that was the case for me was batch my tasks, whether it be like uh, content creation for blog posts or product descriptions, things like that, inventory checks, stock, like customer service tickets, things like that. I would try and make the most of that time initially before I'd hired a virtual assistant and 
really have an initial push of just front loading that work to build the business. You are effectively working two full-time jobs at the same time when you start, but it's only to get it up and running. It's basically to get it to the point where it's profitable enough to hire a virtual assistant so that you then don't have to do that stuff and it then becomes someone is working there for your business full-time. So right now, if you're listening to us and you are working a full-time job and you're thinking, how on earth do I do this? Just remember you're in the same boat as we were when we first started our e-commerce businesses. So you can handle all of the business tasks that you need to during your off hours. It is possible. Yes, you have to batch it and use some techniques from the four-hour work week to really leverage your time. But I know when I speak to our masterclass members now, I know many of the people who are in that program who are succeeding started out by spending just a couple of hours per day on their business managing their store because that's all they could commit to it at the time and only then did they scale it up beyond evenings and weekends and once they'd matched or they'd beaten their income then it's time to start thinking about okay i've hired a virtual assistant now potentially with a few months of stable income from this business i could start to think about leaving my full-time job and experiencing the freedom that a business like this really affords you And that's a very exciting time when you know that you've built something for yourself that then matches and beats your income. And then you've got the choice of whether you want to stay in that job or leave it. Um, But crucially, like you say, so many people are starting alongside a full-time job. And that should give people confidence that it is possible. Uh, You just have to be clever about it, I think, in certain ways. But the way that I approached it, I knew that all the time I was spending on my nine-to-five job, I was working for that company, that housing association, that nine to five corporate job that I was doing. And then every hour that I could carve out for my own business and start in my own e-commerce business, I knew and treated that as time for my future self. I knew that that time invested was actually for my own business, my own company that would then pay me back for, for months and years to come. So it's knowing that, having that really strong reason why that Lewis, you alluded to, knowing that you're going to be uh, providing for children on the way that weren't even existing yet. Um, it gives out you a really strong reason as to why you should hustle when you first get started and do the two jobs alongside each other before you've got your own business that will sustain you and provide a much better lifestyle certainly be the case for me so the initial steps then for somebody that wants to start a dropshipping business but they do have a full-time job that's busy and they have full-time hours how would you recommend they get started without feeling overwhelmed i think you have to start really by educating yourself before you do anything else, you just have to have a solid understanding of what dropshipping really involves. And that's the type of dropshipping that's going to build you a long-term, stable, sustainable income for many years to come, a sellable brand and asset, not the kind of dropshipping where you sell a few cheap products from China and then the store shuts down a few months later. Right? That's not, you know, that's a flash in the pan. That's not what we're building here. We're building long-term businesses. I know when I started, I dedicated about an hour or two every evening um, into just learning everything I could about dropshipping. I would join courses. I would invest in myself. I'd use some of the income from my job at the time to really put it towards sharpening my skills and building for my future, learning as much as I could, absorbing like a sponge, and then just taking the best bits and thinking, how can I implement this? How can I do this, this strategy? I'm following a clear path as well. I know that I used to, on the drive into work on my commute, I used to listen to podcasts to get into the zone, listen to things about uh, becoming a digital nomad, visualizing what that looked like, because that was at the time my dream to, to be able to travel the world and to, you know take off and, and uh, run my business from a laptop. And then more in-depth strategies around e-commerce and dropshipping. So if this podcast had existed back then, I'm sure I'd have been subscribed. And then just reading articles about e-commerce strategies and, and making sure that I was balancing the intake of information with the execution and the taking of action because otherwise they don't just want to become a sponge that absorbs everything but then does nothing with it there's a lot of those people out there who know everything but don't take any action and so i remember mapping out my business plan and i'd do it on weekends and it felt like it was exciting i would block out time go to a coffee shop get my laptop out and it, it felt like i was planning an, a trip an adventure but it was like my own life was the adventure. That that was the reason that it was so exciting because I knew all of these plans would eventually materialize if I took the right actions into becoming my future. And that's the most exciting journey that you can possibly plan, right? It's, it's your own future, your own destiny. So yeah, mapping that out, setting realistic goals and timelines 
that respected my current job commitments because I was working for a company and I wanted to give them my all while I was there. But then in my downtime, I would make sure that I had those goals clearly set and I could work away and chip away at those commitments until I'd eventually start to, to build up my confidence. But you have to start small to gain confidence. So that might mean just initially setting up your company or setting up your business bank account or just following along with some training and choosing your niche and then building your Shopify store day by day, step by step. Like this doesn't just happen overnight. You're not suddenly going to have a team and thousands of orders coming in. It's going to happen with your first order, then your second order, and then something will go wrong and then you'll fix it and then you'll hire a VA and then, you know, this stuff happens day by day. So I think you just got to remember the the long-term goal, the vision, the reason why you're doing it is the thing that will get you through those bumps along the way because there will be bumps. It will be tough at times, but it's so worth it on the other side when you experience that freedom. And focusing on that future is going to be key because you'll be putting in time and effort and there'll be some sacrifices initially when you get started. I know for me, it was always the morning and like similar to yourself, about an hour or two hours if I could in the morning before I started work would be a perfect time for me because it, in my mind, that was prioritizing myself over the other commitments that I had. Although I still gave my all in my job until I left that, that position, I knew that if I could do one task every single day, then that would give me, you know, the step forward I needed that 1% growth every day to get to my goals. So I carved out that time. But if you're a morning person, morning works well. If you're an evening person, evening's fine. Um, and also weekends, perhaps there's a few sacrifices that you need to make. But with the long-term vision that you've got and that I had, it made it all worth it. And it was an easy decision for me to make that work because it's such an exciting journey. Like you say, once you set out and visualize what it is you're going for, it becomes exciting every day to know that you're working towards your future. But I think the key point that you mentioned there was breaking things right down into manageable chunks. I think the only way you really understand what those small manageable chunks are is if you have educated yourself and are following podcasts or a program. Certainly for myself joining the Dropship Unlock Masterclass, I knew that I had the energy, I had the vision to put into starting a business, but I needed the step-by-step targets each day to put for myself. And the last thing I needed when I was busy with a nine-to-five job already and you know, tired at the end of every day because you put your all into your work, the last thing I wanted to do was then work it all out for myself. Having that guidance took away a large part of that effort that you would need to muster after a busy day at work because you don't have to work out what it is you need to do. You have the goal already set out the day before and then you can go straight into that in the morning or the evening whenever you've carved out that time, which makes it a huge difference. And for those people that are wondering, how have other people been able to do this transition and start a business alongside a full-time job? Can you share a little bit more about your own personal story and how you were able to start a business alongside a job? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I personally balanced uh, a very demanding job while starting my first dropshipping business. And I've seen many others now in our community do the same. I know in my first year of dropshipping, it got to the point where I generated a decent full-time income on the side from my business while I was still working my nine to five job at the time. And I would use the evenings and mornings and weekends to focus on building the business anytime that I could really I'd always be thinking about it even through work it would be in the back of my mind like in my subconscious playing along thinking like what have I got to do later on when I get to to work on my passion because I knew at that point I was building my exit I was building something that was going to allow me that freedom and that I remember that satisfaction that feeling of making my first significant profit like when you make your first few sales in a week and you're like I've just made you know, a couple of thousand pounds in profit. And you just think, I remember my first two sales happened um, while I was in bed at home. I wasn't feeling great. And I just think, thought to myself, I've made more in profit from those two orders of like, say, 2,000 pounds in, in orders than I would have done if I'd have got in the car, commuted for an hour, gone to work all day, commuted for an hour back and got home, been exhausted, given up all my time. And I've still made more in 10 minutes because of all the evenings I spent in Cafe Nero uploading products, because of all the mornings I spent in the gym reception lobby at the hotel, you know, uh, liaising with customers and figuring out suppliers and uploading products and doing all of the, the admin, the front loading that you need to do initially. And so it's that great satisfaction of knowing that you, you've done it, but also you've done it while still having the security of a full-time job. That's the, like, the golden ticket. If you can do that, you really have nailed it because 
you've you've completely mitigated your risk. If something were to go wrong in your business, which often it does in the early few months, you've got stable income still coming from it. But now you can make decisions that are strategic, that are not based in fear or scarcity. You can make long-term moves and think, well, what do I, how do I want this business to, to be? And so you're not chasing quick cash with it. You're actually doing it whilst you have an income already coming in. So that's really the best way. If you're in that position now, I would, I would make the most of it and use that income you have to build something like this on the side. Eventually, when I had matched my income and then eventually exceeded my job's income from the business, it just allowed me to transition fully into e-commerce because it becomes rational to do so at that point. You think, well, okay, I've earned more for the last, say, six months from my e-commerce business than I would have done or that I've taken home from my other business, yet the other business is taking up 40 hours of my time per week. Something's wrong here. Like, I need to shift how my how I invest my time. And so, yeah, it does. It takes discipline. It takes smart time management and it is frustrating and there's a lot of front loading and sometimes you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel but it is entirely doable small steps small chunks every day the key is to stay organized to set clear priorities and just remain consistent throughout with your efforts and you will get there yeah and knowing that the goal is so great and you've got this vision for your future it makes those sacrifices all worthwhile it's so key to consistently check in with that i know yeah, your story is, is so inspirational to know that you know you not only started it alongside a job, but you quickly matched and beat your income to the point where you felt co- comfortable to be able to leave that job and go to Thailand and start traveling the world. So it, it, it's inspirational. And I had a similar story where I generated about £250,000 in revenue within that first year uh, of starting my business. And throughout pretty much that whole first year, I was still staying in my nine to five job and, and doing it along the side. And something you mentioned there, and I completely agree, a lot of time, you know, if you are in a full-time job, you might see that as a negative and a reason why you can't start drop shipping. But in fact, you could turn that on its head and realize that by having a full-time job, you've got a consistent income stream coming in already that can get you up and running and start with a drop shipping business. And then when you're ready to fly the nest, you can do that knowing that you've got an income coming from your, your business. Uh, and oftentimes, certainly the case for me, once you go full time after you've got a consistent income coming already, it then is able to scale more quickly because you can put your time into the business. So it's a clear path that both of us have followed, Lewis, and hopefully we're, we're painting a picture of how it is when you first get started. So for somebody that is keen and wants to get started, what advice would you be giving to somebody that comes to you and says, how do I start alongside a full time job? Well, you have to stay organized. That's crucial. Otherwise, overwhelm will kick in you will get overwhelmed and what happens when we get overwhelmed is we just give up we throw in the towel and we say oh God, there's too much to do too many moving parts too many things okay i'll just work a nine to five for the rest of my life then you know and that's that's it like dream killed <laughs> so you don't want that to happen so the way you avoid overwhelm is you make sure you're you're organized and you keep your business tasks organized and then you prioritize them you think about what are the revenue generating activities i can be doing here signing suppliers getting those products live on my store, getting my ads up and running, optimizing my website. You know, these are the things that move the needle. It's not the tinkering around with like the different colors of buttons and, you know, changing like menu structures here and stuff like that's great. And that can all happen later. But for now, we take a very direct route. We run ads directly to product pages. So, you know, if you're thinking, I think my hero image on my slider on my homepage should be here and it should be a little bit more centered and it should be there. Like, fine, that's all good. But I would outsource that stuff later to a designer who's done that a million times and is way better at it than me, rather than wasting my time initially on it, because that's not the thing that's going to generate the sales if you're sending customers directly to product pages, because they'll bypass your homepage anyway. So to to get those tasks um, prioritized, you can use project management tools, things like um, Asana is one that I love to use that I believe is free to start with um, or very low cost. And you can use something like Trello, which which definitely is free. And you can just put your tasks into the project management tool, drag them up as like cards, set deadlines on them and just hold yourself accountable. You could even have like a, a three columns in your Trello board, which would be like to do, in progress, completed. Simple as that, really easy project management. And as soon as you've done them, you drag them across from in progress over to completed and you constantly are reordering them based on what the highest priorities are. That was one of the ways I used to focus and get the most important tasks done during the limited time that I had available because that's the 
finite resource that you're fighting against. It's that limited time. The other thing is engaging in communities like ours. We've built our community so that when you are getting that mentorship, when you're getting the information from our training modules, you're not then forced to digest and interpret that on your own on a desert island. You can go to others and say in the community, hey, when they talk about this, how have you guys interpreted that on your businesses? How have you done it? And you'll get a flood of other people helping you answering your questions immediately, saving you days, weeks, months of time and saving you a lot of wasted money because you won't be wasting it on things that don't work. But also think of the opportunity cost. Think of how much sooner you could be making sales had you had the answers to the thing you're trying to figure out a month ago now and have moved past it. I remember when I started joining forums and attending webinars and going to events during my off hours and during evenings and weekends, those interactions and the people that I met provided me with the insights that I needed and I definitely wouldn't have discovered on my own, but also the belief that this is real and it's not just something on the internet you see on YouTube. It's actually, there are humans behind this who are living, breathing people who are doing this every day. And I couldn't believe that when I first got around, I think I went to a Shopify meetup in London. I just remember like meeting all these other entrepreneurs and chatting to people and it just left me so fired up. And I thought, I'm going to do this because I've seen other people doing it now. And that's why we have live meetups now in our masterclass, because when someone joins, great, they're in a program, they're in a community, but it's digital. So we wanted to add an in-person element to it. So now several times a year, we'll have meetups in person. We'll get together. We just have one on an amazing rooftop bar in central London. We're having drinks and food into the evening. We gave out awards. Like it's, it's really important part of forming those bonds, those connections. So that's the first thing, get around other people, get organized. I think the other aspect of this would be to just make sure you are patient, you are persistent. You know, as we said, success won't happen overnight. So remain committed to your goals and adjust your strategies so that when you learn and you learn what works and what doesn't work, you you'd not you do more of what works and less of what doesn't it sounds simple but make sure that you're not kind of fixated on like i have to follow this path regardless of whether it works or not you adjust you tweak your you know it's like a winding road business sometimes you never quite know what your business will eventually become and if you're looking for detailed strategies on managing time and resources effectively we did an episode on this on the podcast and if you check out episode 36 of the dropship unlocked podcast it was titled The Fastest Way to Make Consistent Profit Dropshipping. Yeah, a great one to follow there because speed is key. And I think everyone wants to get to success as quickly as possible. But great point. There will be some patience and persistence. And it all depends on how many hours you can commit. We say roughly two hours a day to, to aim for to get started for that real initial phase of the first six to eight weeks to really get up and running. Um, and then beyond that, you can start to put Uh, outsourcing things in place you can start to put automations in place so it it gets less so there's a front-loading aspect of this work and then it can start to pay you back over the long run with constant iterations and improvements but yeah the the journey is is fantastic and and something you said I think is key is the organization and there's lots of actionable strategies that you can take away from this today and really start to put in place even if you're in a full-time job so even having a Trello board and breaking down into those three columns and in that first to-do column You'd have all of the, the main steps for starting an e-commerce business. You'd have the register a company, open a business bank account, find your niche, build your minimum viable Shopify store, and then you will sign suppliers. Then you'll set your ads up and then you'll outsource and automate and, and scale the business from that position. And you can drag those across as you go through each step. And the way to make all of those steps much more simple to follow would be, as you say, Lewis, getting into a community that can really just push you along and pull you up to get to the position where you want to be. Now, for, for people that are ready and desperate to take those steps and want to escape that nine to five job through an e-commerce business, do we have places to point them to get started? Well, we do. I mean, following a step-by-step guidance will definitely make the, the managing of your business around your job so much easier to do and, and much more clear because you won't be guessing. So you can prioritize the hours that you do have to work on the right things. Probably the primary resource that I'd send people to who, who want to just do this right the first time would be to get your hands on my book where I lay out the steps required to grow your own successful dropshipping business. And you can get that at htabook.com. That book's called The Home Turf Advantage. And so if you head to htabook.com, you can pick it up there. 
enjoying the podcast? We'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment or a review, and we might just feature it on an upcoming episode. Also, for detailed show notes and resources, head to dropshipunlock.com forward slash podcast. If you found value from any episode of this podcast, please take just 10 seconds to leave us a quick five-star review on your podcast app of choice. It helps us more than you could imagine. And who knows, you might just hear your comments on the show. Thanks for being part of our community. Your support helps us keep delivering a new episode every week. Now it's time to answer a question that we've had in for the podcast from a listener. So thank you very much to Anthony M for asking your question. And Anthony asked his question actually in the Launchpad community, which you get access to if you go to hdabook.com and pick up Lewis's book. So Anthony's question, he's asked, Hi, I was just wondering about the liability, i.e. if a customer was injured through the use of a sold product through our store. I assume that the supplier would be liable as opposed to ourselves as the store owner. It's a great question, Anthony. So thanks for, for sending that in the Launchpad. First, I think it's worth pointing out that we are not legal experts. Now, we can talk about our own understanding and experience, but this is not legal or professional advice. So full disclaimer there. And from my experience, the supplier will have the most liability if their products were ever to cause any harm to a customer. That that pro- probably is true. And um, However, they should have relevant insurance in place to protect themselves as the supplier of that product. But we are still the retailers, remember. So we ensure that our suppliers meet high standards and they have the appropriate insurance in place. But we'd also take out our own public and product liability insurance to cover ourselves as retailers too. That's that's my view. That's what we do. Um, I think that's what you do as well, James. But when I started, I made sure to uh, seek advice from legal experts to really understand our liability and understand um, how we could make sure we were fully covered. So that then gives you peace of mind it means that you can set something up that's just a recurring insurance policy that you never have to think about again, and it's it's done and it renews every year. As the retailer, our responsibility is to ensure that the products are delivered as advertised. And so we get this assurance from the relationships that we have with our suppliers. If you want to be sure, I'd recommend reaching out to a legal expert. Um, you can do this you know, a Google search or via a freelancer website or speaking with an insurance company. And just make sure that you explain the situation to them and then they'll be able to discuss liability with you and how to get the right policies in place to make sure you've got the right cover. But thanks for the question. Exactly. Yeah, great question, Anthony. Thank you very much. It's all about just making sure you're covered with the right policies and having chats with legal experts to make sure that you're doing all the right things as a responsible retailer that we are. So now it's time to highlight a recent review that we've had for the podcast as well. So a big thank you to Dave F for sharing your thoughts in an Apple podcast review. So Dave said that this podcast is all you need for success. Lewis is teaching others the methods he used to build a £4 million business alongside James, who can vouch for the advice that Lewis provides as he's built his own successful stores. Realistic, encouraging, informative and thought-provoking, this podcast is all you need to create a successful UK-based business. Thank you very much for your review, Dave. And uh, yeah, we're, we're actually a long way beyond the four million pound mark now, but we're thrilled to hear that you've been enjoying the podcast. Before we wrap up, I have a quick favor to ask. Have you left us a review yet? If not, it would mean the world to us if you could take just a few seconds to rate and review the podcast on your favorite platform. Your feedback helps us reach more listeners and keeps us motivated to bring you more valuable content. Plus, we love reading your thoughts and we might even share your review on our next episode. Thanks so much for your support. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast. We hope you're walking away with insights and inspiration. To kickstart your e-commerce journey, grab a copy of my book, The Home Turf Advantage at htabook.com. It's a distilled guide based on real experience to help you build your e-commerce venture. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more strategies and success stories. And if you like what you heard, a five-star review would mean the world to us and you might just get a shout out on an upcoming episode. And finally, thank you for deciding to spend your time with us today. We can't wait to bring you more insights on the next episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast.